Hi, I'm Spencer. And I'm Blake. And, and you're, you're about, about to get, get jumped. jumped. Welcome to Blake and Spencer Get Jumped, a weekly podcast where we watch the anime so you don't have to. But you should still watch the anime. That's true. This week on Get Jumped, we are starting to watch Hunter x Hunter. Yeah, it's about a uh, hunter who fell in love with another hunter in the woods and then kills his hunter, who was also his ex. So it's really like a like a double meaning. No, none of that. You know, let's just let's, let's just jump in. <laughs> Um, so this week we are sitting down with our first, uh, two episodes, yeah, of Hunter x Hunter. Yeah, just two. Um, this is, uh, so this is our fourth episode of Blake and Spencer Get Jumped, but it's the fifth episode that we're recording. And Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the order. Basically what I'm trying to get at, we've also watched the episodes for number six. So what I'm saying is we're starting to get a handle on how much we're going to be able to cover in a single episode. Mm -hmm. This might be actually a little bit light compared to the other episodes, but I think it's in a good way. There's, these are really stacked episodes. Mm -hmm. um, I would say you may have noticed Cowboy Bebop and One Punch Man, we do fewer episodes because it's a shorter series with a lot more content per episode. Naruto, we're doing... Uh, I don't know, like five episodes each time or something like yeah. that. So we're able to cover more. Hunter x Hunter is probably going to read a little bit more like a shorter series, even though it is almost 200 yeah, episodes long. Yeah, it's pretty long. And one of the big things that you have to know about Hunter x Hunter going into it is that it has a really rich and long backstory um, through the manga universe. It's one of those. Uh, it's one of those mangas that was really, really. Um, really, really prevalent and also really rich way before the anime really became a big thing. So there was there was originally an anime that came out, right? Yeah, there's another one. I don't have notes up in front of me, but the one we're watching is from 2011. Mm -hmm. The other one is from before. And as far as I know, the 2011 one is the most recent one. There may have been some OVAs since then, which mm -hmm. is basically direct-to-video um, animation, either episodes or short movies. Uh, but overall... This is the most recent uh, anime series, and it it has a distinct end. I've watched all but the last two episodes, I want to mm. say, um, and it comes to a conclusion, but the, the manga is still ongoing. Is that right? Um, I think that they just did like a reboot of the manga. They're messing around with a, sort of a, a different sort of world away from the main characters that you really got attached to instead of the original manga. It's been, um, on, it's been on several hiatuses. Yeah, now. there's... Uh, there's there's a, a really weird story about the the uh, the person who created the manga that we're not going to go too much into. If you really want to read about it, there's a very rich wiki that I looked into about it. Um, uh, if you just pull up Hunter x Hunter and just read about the manga and what I'm happened, I'm probably going to want to go into this in the future because I'm interested. Yeah, you're going to have to dig into it. Um, we'll we'll do another one on this. Uh, we're just we... not prepared. We're so, we're. <laughs> We're just all over the place. No, we'll, we'll talk about it more, but really we're going to get you into the anime today. Um, and the first thing that you need to know about this anime is uh, right off the bat, it introduces you to this world. And be prepared, you're going to be way more interested in the world than what it gives you in the first couple of episodes. The, okay, I, I agree, but I also have to contradict you. Um, I want to say, like, so you watched a lot of this show before I started. You were mm -hmm. still watching it when I did finally start, but you were, like, selling it to me for probably months. Mm -hmm. And you kept being like, this is an anime made for people who love anime. Mm -hmm. And I, I just didn't get around to it. I finally did. And it was like, it's so different, but it also hits a lot of those beats that, like, with shonen anime, I really love. Mm -hmm. And I know that's exactly what you're talking about. And that's how I've sold it to people since then. Because it's just, it's unique enough to feel fresh and new, but it's hitting those same triumphant and exciting moments that you have kind of come to expect from a lot of the more well-known shonen anime. 
Yeah. Um, I, I think, though, that what what I'm getting at the most of is uh, it kind of happens in One Piece as well when you really start watching it. And, like, the first thing that you see is them talking about this grand, grand arc and this grand world that you are not acquainted with. So, like, in One Piece, they're talking about a world that's basically made of water. Mm-hmm. So, like, yes, our world is mostly made of water, but in this world, it's mostly made up of islands. It's almost and, a water world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's make a movie and tank our entire business about it. Yeah. And... <laughs> <laughs> Let's go underwater and get people with gills. It'll be great. That you know, the first like fifteen minutes of Waterworld is a really fascinating movie. Oh yeah, and then they just blow up all the. Cool and then they shit. were just like oil, oil, oil. Let's oh, it's talk about oil. actually just an action movie. <laughs> all right, well, we're getting sidetracked. Anyways, so the first thing that you see in Hunter x Hunter is them introducing you to this very grand world. The grand world they're talking about. You, you see like weird monsters. You see weird tre- treasures that people are looking for. You find out that there are these people that call themselves. Hunters, yes, hunter is a very normal used word, but yeah. in this world, apparently, it means people that are like going out and killing monsters it's, or going out and yeah, it's a class essentially that you must achieve. And later on in the show, we'll find out that you actually get a license for it that you obtain by passing a super complicated exam, which we'll start to get into today. Yeah. Okay, so we then meet our, uh, our. I almost wanted to call him his, the titular character, but he's not. It's not at all. It's title. not named after him. Okay, so you meet, uh, you meet Gon, and Gon Isn't is... Isn't it Gon? It's, you can pronounce it, I think, either way. Let's pronounce it differently, and that way <laughs> the, the listeners don't have any consistency. Yeah, and then we'll make a movie about this anime and get all of the characters' names wrong. And the then... Avatar! <laughs> Yeah, so... Uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, go into Rotten Tomatoes, look up Avatar The Last Airbender, my I'm not Shyamalan. It's just The Last Airbender. Oh, The, the Last the Airbender. Movie. I think they took away the word Avatar to make it worse. Um, <laughs> and then and then it's like, it gets got like a two on Rotten Tomatoes. We're, we're really salty about it. Um, it's so bad. Yeah, you call you call him Ong one more time, we're we just gonna break We might everything. need to watch Avatar on this show. It's not an anime, but like, I might try and bend the rules. It's our show. We can do anything. Yeah, we're show but, uh, uh, huh? We're show benders. We're show benders. Yeah. yeah. What's the blood bending of show bending? I don't know. Probably time. Yeah. But uh, uh, God, we digress. <laughs> so, so we'll talk about that later. We've got a lot of show left before we. I mean, we're only. This is the fourth show, so we're yeah. stuck with these four for uh, at least until probably Bebop will be the one we're. No, One Punch Man will be the first one we're Definitely done with. Definitely the first one. We'll deal with this, but it's going to be a minute, so settle in, folks. Okay, so we, we tune in on Gon sitting in a tree, and you don't know exactly what he's doing. He's, he's wearing hella leaves. It's like camouflage or something. Yeah, I don't know if it's camouflage or that he's been sitting so still inside of that tree for so long that it's just like Maybe. nobody's noticing. I him. think he. I think he. Had, I think the leaf has. Hat, though he's like this big giant leaf on his head like a hat i think that's to like shade him from the sun so he can hang out maybe he's he's probably trying to stay cool so he can be real still for the fish yeah he's okay. fishing cool so he's fishing out there and you go into the town and you learn about how uh people are talking about the the, the king lord of, of the, the lord of the lake well, yeah. it's the king of lake anyways um and they're talking about how nobody could catch it but apparently there's some bet, uh, get ready for backstory, that, uh, was it Mito-san? Mito-san? Mito. Mito-san? Um, is, you don't know really what she is. She sort of seems like a mother figure, figure to Gon, but you don't really learn who she really is until much later on inside the series. Um, but she has made this bet with Gon, or this promise, that if he can catch the Lord of the Lake, then he can go on and take his hunter exam. Yeah, this is a gambit from her because the Lord of the Lake is, you know, again, supposedly uncatchable, at least not for a very long time. So she's banking on the fact that Gon, who is a pretty slight 12-year-old kid, will probably not be able to handle this. Yeah. Um... Some more people that are fluent in backstory also start speaking about it's, how, like, his father caught the Lord of the Lake. Yeah, when it's he not talk no jutsu levels, but we do get some backstory here. So, Gon's fishing line starts to, you know, he he's caught something and it's the Lord of the Ra- the Lord of the Lake. So he's got to reel him in now. Who was the Lord of the Rings? <laughs> Maybe. Let's just. And there was a large eye in the Don't distance that was me, watching. Them. Don't tempt me, Frodo. <laughs> So if we like, so his, his he starts to try to reel it in, and they mention like, oh, how is this little kid going to reel in the Lord of the Lake? He's huge. Yeah. So now we find out how, which is 
a Do- complex system of pulleys yeah, that he does you create around the tree. Basically, uh, on the spot Rube Goldberg machine to <laughs> yes. pull in this. So he just like winds himself around the tree, and then we're like, "What is this fishing line made oh, yeah. out of?" It's like pulling inside of the tree so hard that it looks like sparks are coming off. Yeah, honestly, the fishing line it, it looks like it should be like cutting the tree if the fish is that big, and if the line is strong enough to hold it, it's got to be some sort of like. I think it's vibranium. It's what Captain America. You America's called it shield unobtainium is. earlier. Yeah, because I had been reading the TV tropes page for Avatar, uh, <laughs> not the Last Airbender, the James Cameron abortion. So yeah, yeah, you can't uh, you can't call it uh, unobtainium. It's like, you, is it a, be able to be obtained? No, no, it's unobtainium. <laughs> That's why we're here on this planet for yeah. this thing you can't obtain. Yeah. Okay, so God, we can we. Are we ever going to talk about this show? <laughs> Anyways, so from there he catches the Lord of the Lake. It is this horrible fish monster that has yeah. like like spider legs. Yeah, it's a giant fish with insect legs. It's super gross and creepy. Yeah. And then uh, they talk about, oh, he achieved this thing that his dad achieved when he was only 12. Yeah, which and is the same age as Gone right 12. now. He's 12. Looks like he did it. What a nice Why are we surprised that this happened? So we get this scene where Mito comes up to Gone's room. Gone's like super triumphant. I think he's packing or something because mm-hmm. he knows that he's passed the test. It's going to let him go off and be a hunter and Mito comes up to talk him out of it, and she uses some really questionable tactics to do it. Like, I get it. I'm I'm not trying to, like, throw too much shade at her, because, like, she is distressed. Like, she's not his mother, but she is his mother figure, and they both perceive each other approximately that way. Like, they know that she's not his mom, but she's been that for so long that it's sort of functionally that way. Yeah. And she's distraught like he's about to leave and she really doesn't want him to and her first tactic is to be like you know your dad left you here as a baby to go be a hunter so like why would you want to do that because then gone is just like he he completely spins it on her yeah he turns it immediately the (laughs) classic is severe yeah he was like oh no if it must be so wonderful to be a hunter if someone can abandon their child to go do it yeah which made us both kind of go what yeah it's real messed up but it's like gone is so sincere and there is something there like if it's that special he wants to find out what makes it so special and i by that, even though it's a little questionable. Yeah, a little upsetting. Too. Yeah, Mito also mentions how dangerous it is to be a hunter and how likely you are to be injured or killed, and he's, like, not hearing any of that either. So it's a little bit more world-building where we kind of know that being a hunter is a little bit dangerous from the intro, but this is the first time a character inside the story has said it. Yeah, and uh, we haven't really gone into it yet, but I'm going to take a, a quick step back to talk about the the intro to the show, too. Oh, now yeah. that we talk about, like, hunters being a little bit dangerous. And this is the... Si- since you, you haven't really heard about it so much inside of the story, all you've seen is this really serene scene, and we're going to go into the first bit of it being actually, like, a little bit dangerous inside of the show. In the opening, you see people that are, like running around, fighting, there's uh, people that look really creepy in the distance. You see a lot of this in anime openings that are, like, really silly, but the way that it works here with the weird 80s music that's from Japan uh, playing in 2011... Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's like really, really plays together well. Also, the intro music, let's talk about that, because... Hunter x Hunter does something really weird with the intro music, which is it never changes. Oh, yeah. Over almost 200 episodes, there is a first verse and there is a second verse, and they oscillate between the two, and that's it. The song stays the same, whereas in most anime, you change songs once or even twice an arc. Oh, yeah. Naruto, like, changes its its music all the time. Yeah, and it can be really exciting when you get a new intro if it's a great intro. Every once in a while it's not. But most of the time, anime intros are really fun, and they have really high-quality animation, so it's a really exciting moment when the new intro comes on. Hunter x Hunter has different animation, and the first time they, air quotes, change the intro song, they're using the other verse, but it's the same song the whole time. Yeah. Which is strange and really unique the ending credits are different they're they change throughout the show but like 
it's really, as far as I'm, like, my experience, it's really unheard of to yeah. have the same song the whole time. Yeah. And we've watched a few animes before. Uh, once or twice, yeah. To tell. Um, anyways, so we're back to the story. Uh, gone after taking a very strange, like, uh, pinky swear with... Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's, it's important, though. He swears to come back to Whale Island, which is where they live. Or swallow a thousand needles. Uh, <laughs> and the way that they do it, it's really sing-songy, so it seems like a Japanese children's thing. Yeah. Like, it's probably it's probably not like, weird for Japanese people. Like Ring Around the Rosie. Yeah, about Ring the Around the Rosie is really messed up. Yeah, that's, uh, that's about the bubonic plague, if you don't know. Yeah. How, how did you not know this? It's motorcycle time, by the way, yeah. outside. Also, we might hear pops because the 4th of July was yesterday. So. Yeah, and they 4th so hard. So hard. Yeah. So, anyway, so Gon makes this promise to come back to Whale Island and see Mito, and then he gets on a boat, and the boat sails away, and everybody in the crowd except one little girl is, like, super happy. The little girl's not relevant. She's just not smiling. Yeah. And Gon yells over the railing that he's going to become the best hunter ever. And everybody else on the boat that's going to the hunter exam sort of rebuffs him and is like, oh, you know, you're full of it. Like, you must not know anything about the hunter exam and how dangerous and difficult it is if you're going to talk like that. Uh, except for two people who don't say anything. Oh, yeah. And I immediately noticed them because they are the only people that have color on them. Yeah. And Blake was like, yeah, you can tell because they have character design. <laughs> yeah. You can always tell. This is one of the downsides of the animation medium is that very rarely... Well, you have a show where the main characters are designed at the same level as the background characters or side characters. So you can almost always pick out somebody who's going to be important later on. Uh, if they're not in the opening or outro credits, you can probably tell by just the way that their design stands out in a crowd. Yeah. Uh, I guess literally. So, yeah, we have these two characters. We're, we're going to meet them properly in a minute. But uh, first... Um, Gon realizes by the way that the gulls are behaving that there's going to be a storm. Also, he keeps on like cracking his nose and then yeah. smelling really hard. It's weird. And then he climbs very fast up to the very top of the sh like the masthead, and then he like cracks his nose and then smells again. He's like, "I smell a big storm coming." Yeah, he can tell. I guess it's the ion storm. in the air or whatever. Yeah, so we cut to the storm because we're not going to waste any time. Air. Yeah, you know how it gets like ionized or whatever. Sure. You can tell when it's going to rain from the smell. It's not that weird. Sure. Maybe not as well as Gon can, but sure. you can tell. I can tell. <laughs> That's my X-Man power. Don't you take this from me. Don't you look at me like that. <laughs> this is like the lamest X-Men power. You shut up. I'm on the C, C team. Can't even <laughs> say it right. Let's move on. C is for candy. <laughs> so. Anyways. There's a big storm. Yeah. And, and everybody on the ship is sick. They get super seasick. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh yeah, we didn't even talk about the captain. Well, we have to yeah. talk about him because he all red him nose. Because like yeah, so like he is drinking, and you know he's drinking because his nose is red, and this is Japanese anime, fully red. Yeah, because he is just like he's constantly has like a bottle of whiskey in hand, and he is drinking, which is one of the things that like I really respect about this show is that they don't just go into like the trope of like everybody who's drinking and is a drunk in Japanese. Like, culture is drinking, like, sake. Instead, he's, like, drinking whiskey. And it's just like, oh, the people in this world understand that there is more than one kind of liquor. Yeah, also, the characters that are portrayed as drunk are almost always portrayed as um, obnoxious nuisances. Yeah. And usually are unable to handle themselves. Yeah. The only other exception I can think of off the top of my head is Rock Lee, which we won't see for a very long time, but will be in our Naruto coverage and will be awesome. Yeah. But this guy is super confident. He's drunk the whole time, and he totally handles himself. Oh my gosh, did you realize that, like, he's grizzled, and he's old, and he's drinking all the time, and he's sort of grumpy, and he's short? He is Wolverine of this universe, and it doesn't affect him because of his healing factor. I thought you were going to say Ron Swanson, but... Oh. I see what you're doing, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's no. the Wolverine of this universe. Yeah, I feel that. Except for, like, overweight Wolverine. And he also doesn't have, like, a young ingenue protege that he's, yeah. like best friends with it, for anyone who's listening that wants to draw as something please please for the love of god send in wolverine mashups with the old drunken man on the ship from hunter x hunter episode one totally down yeah 
Let's do that. Cool. That's a good move. So, so we go inside of the ship, and we, we see that everybody that during the storm has gotten sick, except for these three characters. Oh, and that one guy that Gon helped with apples earlier. Yeah, that, well, he's not part of the ship, so we can forgive that. That's not necessarily as awesome. But this is one of the things the show does really well, is showing how adept characters are at certain things by having other characters not be adaptive. Oh yeah, and they they do a really good job. You'll you'll see through this episode and the next episode they do a really good job of like um show don't tell, yeah. which I I really respect. It's great storytelling. Yeah, they they don't really just like, you know, backstory you to death. Instead, they just like show you it happening. Yeah, and I got to say too, one of the things that Hunter x Hunter has is super powered individuals. I mean, every anime, well not everyone, Cowboy Bebop is not quite like this. It's yeah. more firmly sci-fi but Mm -hmm. most shonen anime have superpowers you know the dragon ball z chi and they shoot laser beams and stuff like that and they are super strong individuals and they are absurd from the beginning in hunter x hunter the characters are kind of absurd from the beginning but it the build is slow like these characters this is a little bit of a spoiler alert but like Later on, there will be a certain type of energy system in this world that allows people to do superhuman things. But we're not going to get there for, like, I don't know, 40 episodes oh, or yeah, more? Oh, yeah, it's going to be a while. It's a long time, but these characters are still so adept, and they have these fascinating challenges and battles without using superpowers for a really long time. Oh, yeah, and and the the first one that you, we're going to talk about uh, right now is, well, the, the ship is, is really starting to, like, everyone on the ship is very, very sick, and these people... Um, these people, the the three that you see gone, who you know, and the other two get invited to the captain's quarters because he sees them being able to take care of themselves through the storm. Right. So he asks them to introduce themselves. We meet uh, gone re- reintroduces himself. Then we have uh, one who is a uh, character with sort of shaggy blonde hair and uh, traditional looking garb who is kind of gender ambiguous, but it'll turn out to be a guy. Mm-hmm. Um, his name is Kurapika, or Kurapika. Kurapika is how they this one, pronounce it. I'm not going to... I don't even think I'm going to be internally consistent with myself on this pronunciation. This name's really difficult. And they say it really fast, too, and not everybody says it the exact same way. I heard it, like, twice differently, at least. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, I guess it's just, you know, there's, ambiguous in yeah, some world. There's also a different cadence to the way that Japanese people say certain words, and that can make some names really challenging. Gym. Yeah, and then you're going to meet uh, the other character who looks like uh, Spike Spiegel of this universe. He is wearing like the exact A same outfit, bit. except for like different hair. He and makes me think of the preacher guy from Trigon, the guy oh, with yeah. the big cross gun. He also is kind of a mix in of uh, that, oh gosh, I cannot remember the name of that anime. Um, feel free to uh, respond in the comments on who this is, but I cannot remember his name. He's off of, um, uh, oh, I remembered, Lupin the Third. Oh, it reminds I haven't seen me that. of like we're gonna watch that eventually. It's uh, if you've never watched Lupin the Third, it's like a uh, an anime that I was introduced to after watching Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid on uh, Toonami. Shout out to Toonami. Hashtag Toonami. Toonami. <laughs> anyways, um, I was <laughs> off the rails immediately. <laughs> anyways, I, I loved it so much because it was so different than everything else I was saying. So I was really introduced to Dragon Ball Z first, and then after that they had reboot, which was like a completely different show. That was, it was an American like, show, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, but it was it, it was like three D animation when three D animation was like that was on Saturday morning cartoons when I was a kid. It was real silly. Anyways, uh, and then right after that they had uh, Loop in the Third, and Loop in the Third was so different because it was like not only was it kind of adult, but it had like like actual violence with people with guns shooting each other and you were just like oh this is just happening and everybody's kind of like joking about it the whole time it was like if you had taken like if you had taken cowboy bebop or something of that sort and you mix it with the looney tunes you would have uh, like loop in the third that's a really weird oh yeah watch it and you'll completely agree with me. well i guess we're gonna have to yeah for sure so this guy's name is leorio is what we're saying oh anyways yeah so, so we're back okay uh so leorio is uh is somebody who you don't really know that much about except for he says he wants money you know, that's why yeah. he's becoming well, a hunter. Interestingly enough, the captain asks them why they want to be hunters. Gon says that he wants to follow his father's footsteps and become a great hunter. The other two refuse to answer, and the captain's like, oh, well, this is part of the hunter exam, and you guys just failed it. So, sorry about it. And so they were like, rewind, rewind! Yeah, so they they decide to own up. So Karapika 
reveals that he's a part of something called the Kurta clan, which was massacred by a group called the Phantom Troop that we may or may not meet in the near future. They're super cool. And the Phantom Troop is uh, Bad News Bears, and Kurapika wants to become a hunter so that he can take vengeance on them for destroying his entire clan, and Leorio wants to get rich. Yeah. Well, at least that's what he says. It's a little more complicated than that. And but... then uh, Kurapika and Leorio kind of get into like a pissing contest yeah. about like who can be the most uh, obnoxious. Yeah, Kurapika uh... <laughs> keeps taking pot shots at him and because yeah. he... Leorio's loud and brash. And... Yeah, and he's like, you need to call me by, like Leorio-san so you respect for your elders sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, which if you guys aren't familiar with, Japanese has honorifics like San or Kun or whatever and they mean different things and, and San is a sign of respect. Yeah. So um, they end up getting to the point where uh, Leorio has warned him thrice so they have to step outside yeah. into the storm. At the exact same moment that they discover that they're heading right towards a water spout. Water which spout! Which is just a tornado on the ocean. Yeah, it's a tornado ocean tornado. That was just beautiful. So it's a, it's a water tornado, not a sharknado, <laughs> mind you. You don't know. It could be. There could be a shark in there waiting. I would say that tornadoes are less likely to turn into sharknadoes than water spouts, but the name transition is less easy, so it's a gray area. Yeah. Anyways, so they're standing on the edge of the ship, like, in in classic we-are-about-to-battle mode. And it's so awesome. So, I want to digress again about the animation, because the animation is so good in this show. But... Also, the early chapters of the manga that this show is, like, currently taking from are so different. Like, they don't look like this at all. It's the same thing with Soul Eater. The early animation is... No, I just want to watch Soul Eater. Dramatically (laughs) different. Soul Eater's great. The early animation is dramatically different from the show's animation, which is very crisp and, and, um, you know, on, on model and stuff like that. So... It's weird to see the transition, but this show has very high quality animation, and they kick it very slightly up a notch for this scene, which is just everybody on the boat trying to take the sails down so they don't head first into a water spout, except Karapka and Leorio, who are just standing there like badasses, glaring at each other and talking about how if you don't take it back... I'm going to beat the Christ out of you. Yeah. And so and so they're just staring at each other, staring each other down. And then they get hit with some water. And one of the guys goes, like, super overboard. He goes, like, flying off. and Past these two guys yeah, facing like, each other. Yeah, like, straight through the center. Both of them showing that they're good guys immediately drop what they were doing and wanting to fight each other to go out to try to grab him. They can't. As they reach out, though... Gone flies past. It's so great. So they have... They've snagged onto the railing and reached out, and this dude's just past their reach, but they're hanging onto the railing because that way they don't fly into space. But Gon just flies into space yeah, and snags this guy's ankles, and they snag his ankles, and everyone is saved, and yeah. it's great. And then they're just like, Gon, you, sh- you were going to kill yourself, but like, if you had fallen in there, you would have been shark bait. There were sharks in that tornado. That's all right. Well, that oh, yeah. is actually canon, so you're right about that. Cool. Anyways, it was a sharknado, you it, guys. It definitely was. Anyways, uh, so they were saying like, uh, if we hadn't have caught you, you would have fallen in. And Gon's response is, "Well, you did catch me." Right. Which is like everybody's like the the most obnoxious response. Gon, <laughs> but he Gon is like the best character. Like he's so earnest and sincere, and you just cannot help but love him. He, he is just full on lovable. He's like Goku if you mixed him with like the conscience from any like Disney film. Yeah, and I would say like Dragon Ball Goku when he's like real oh, young yeah. and innocent Definitely and playful. Dragon Ball Goku. Because older Goku is much more serious. Uh, he still has that playful quality, but uh, this is child Goku. He's very playful and fun and he has a lot of skill and he can be dangerous if he needs to be but he's just having a good time yeah i don't know if this needs to be said for people that are listening to this but goku is from dragon ball if you've never watched dragon ball pause this episode wow watch like 300 episodes of dragon ball real quick come back yeah because you have missed like one of the building blocks of anime (laughs) yeah i would say the can i say the modern era of shonen anime was ushered in by dragon ball i mean it basically is the forerunner of Naruto and Bleach. 
Oh, yeah. And One Piece, which are, like, sort of the big three of shonen anime of the last decade or so. Yeah, and if you get started on anime, if you're, like, a 20-something or, like, you know, early 30-something, you probably got started on anime watching Toonami, at least in America. Yeah, so you um, probably watched Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon, and those were your shows. Yeah, or you you really got into them, and then you started to watch it after dark, after your parents have gone to sleep, and you watched Toonami after dark, and that's when With you got... Like, Inuyasha. Oh, yeah, and Cowboy Bebop. That's yeah. where I first started watching Cowboy Bebop. Um, anyways, uh, so we are back on the ship. Uh, the The ship captain is just like, you passed the exam. You did it. <laughs> so that's basically it. That's the end of episode one. They get to an island. We're done. So episode two, test of tests. And the great thing about Hunter x Hunter is every space, it's... Like, word, space, X, space, next word, space, X, space, next word. Mm -hmm. That's every single episode is like that. It's great. Yeah. And there are no single word episode titles. And I'm sure it's just because of this naming convention. And I love it. Definitely. It's absurd and it's great. So they get to this island. The captain tells Gon that there's a big cedar tree up on that hill over there. That's a shortcut to the exam location. Leorio does is doesn't want to walk up there or something and decides that he's going to take the bus. And basically he tells off Gon and Kurapika, who's going to go with Gon, that they're being naive and they shouldn't trust everything they hear. And then overhears promptly some people whispering to themselves that they have heard that none of the buses that left for the hunter exam made it. And if you haven't figured it out already, basically everything on this trip is the hunter exam. So, like, what had happened, they don't go into this, but, like, very clearly what happened was the buses were part of the exam, and if you were somebody who wanted to take the bus, that was the easy way out, and you're not going to pass. Yeah. And so they they go uh, after you see a shady figure that's walking behind them. Yeah, being some like... dude with a weird <laughs> nose is following them. Sheesh, 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 sheesh. So... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so he is following after them, and they go down a long, dusty alley, and they're like, nobody's in this weird town. Yeah, they're in a in. ghost town all of yeah. a sudden, and Gon's which like, they've been walking for a while. Yeah, and Gon's like, no, there's lots of people around. And then the doors open, and... Super creepy mask people come out. <laughs> Except for they're all holding weird instruments, and they're like, yeah. da The best is, like, <laughs> one of them has, like, a bike horn, and then one of them has, like, a raven. And every time they're about to do something, the bike horn one squeaks the horn and then the raven squawks and it's hilarious. (laughs) So they're all wearing these masks. They're pretty uniformly dressed except this one old woman. And she explains like, hey, you have arrived at the next part of the hunter exam and here's the deal. I'm going to give you a one word quiz. The answer is either one or two and you either pass or you don't. And that's how this is going to go down. So she gives them the quiz and the quiz is this. You can either save, one, your mother, or two, your lover. Who do you save? Yeah, and the weird guy that's, like, been following them around, he takes the test first. Yeah, basically the three of them, they're taking the test together, by the way. Like, they're being, they're giving a collective answer, essentially. So if one of them screws it up, they're all screwed. Mm -hmm. But uh, they kind of dither over this and talk about how it's sort of an impossible question. And then this dude that's been following them shows up. And it's so great because Leorio's like, who's this guy? And Gon's like, he's been following us since we left the town. (laughs) Which which shows, like, it it shows, like, another level of, like, Gon being, like, super in tune with his senses. And you're like, oh, this kid is, like... He's on top of it. Super intense for some reason. Yeah. So this dude is given the that question and his answer is so great he's like it's number one obviously because you can't replace your mother but you can get another lover yeah which is really weird if you think about it that's definitely like fridge horror if you stop and think about it a little bit oh yeah and so they're like you may pass and he walks down this alley next to them and then they go up and uh kurapika you see is like started to figure this out because leorio has blurted out that there is no answer to this question right but before he can tell him the right answer, she's like, shh, 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 Yeah, shh, the old woman shh. sees that Karapika's figured it out, and she stops him, and it's really cool. Yeah. This is another great show-don't-tell. Like, we don't even have the sort of classic anime thing where the old woman thinks to herself, like, he's figured it out. She's just like, no, 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 you're done. And you can't say anything except the answer. Oh, yeah, they don't really do that. They in don't. They do it a little bit in the second half of this episode with Karapika looking at Gon, but that's about it. And uh, it's done really well. Yeah. Anyway, so they give them the same thing. Number one is the son, and number two is the daughter, or whatever. Who are you going to save? Right. So what's great is Kurapika's figured it out, 
Gon is in quiet contemplation. We don't know what he's up to. And then Leorio is just fucking pissed. Mm. He does not want to answer this question because he's mad that it's a rigged question and that there's no good answer. Mm -hmm. So he goes and gets a stick from a nearby pile of wood and is ready to beat the old woman to death as soon as she's done counting down from five. Yeah. And so she counts down and Leorio immediately attacks. Karapika... Uh, blocks the attack for her and is like, stop acting like a crazy person. We passed. Yeah. This was the right answer. Because the right answer for this was to not answer. Yeah. And they're like, oh, good. You figured it out. And they were like, what about that guy? And they were like, well, that's not the real way to go. Exactly. And this then is. they open up this hidden door and yeah. they're like, this is the way to go. And then Gon pipes up. And he... It's so charming. He's been thinking the whole time and he's just like... Uh, there's no answer to this question. I know that. I know that I couldn't so answer. He's so But I have to come up with an answer because what if this happens to me when I'm becoming a hunter? Yeah. Because I might run into this in my real life and all of them have a like a, oh shit moment. Yeah, like <laughs> this kid's for real right now. Yeah. So it, it's cool. He's a great character. Yeah. So they head up to this tree. They, the, the old woman's like, hey, there's going to be a, cat, a cottage about two hours walk from here. And cat cottage. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> so... Walk up two hours from here. You'll get to this cottage, and there's a couple there, and they're going to help you. Yeah. So they get there. And there is a weird fox monster that has really long, uh, strange bunny ears It's and called talons. a Kiriko, and yeah. it's a form-changing magical beast. Yeah. So uh, they see this uh, this couple that's being attacked by this monster, and uh, the one of the monsters jumps off with the wife, and the husband is just like, please save my wife. Yeah, and, and he's, he's like, like really bleeding. Bloody, and there's a wounds everywhere. So mm -hmm. they're like, Leorio, you go help this dude. We're going to follow him. And Leorio's like, yeah, I got this. He jumps to it because we'll find out that Leorio, Leorio wants to be a doctor, and this is totally his deal. Yeah. Um. So they go chase after him, and Gon is... So this is where we get the uh, the character thinking to himself how powerful another character is. Mm -hmm. And it's done so well. It's, uh, it is more tell, don't show, but it's done so, so well because basically we have found out that these characters are, are very, uh, very proficient um, and skilled characters just by seeing them interact with the world. Mm -hmm. And so then to hear a character that we have learned to trust is skilled, think about how skilled another character is, gives it that weight. Like, they have earned the ability to have a character be surprised at how good somebody is at something. So Karapka's following Gon, and he's just like, man... Gon's able to follow these guys just by their shadows in this dark forest because it's nighttime. Oh, yeah. And he is incredibly fast. So he just, like, jumps on the street, climbs this tree super fast, and starts running after this uh, this this weird... The Kiriko. The Kiriko. And so the Kiriko is running, and he turns around, and he starts speaking to Gon, and Gon's just like, oh, you can speak? Okay, fine. And it, it's sort of like this weird thing where it's just like, uh, must be sort of like a respect for beasts, which you'll learn is like a really important thing later on. Um, but he's like, if you can speak, then maybe I can get more answers out of you. And so he speeds up and he like looks back. He starts talking to Gon. Gon is on a tree branch. Then Gon is just right in front of him. He like shadow steps. Yeah. And he's just like got his like his, his uh, uh, rod and just rod. slams him on the head. Yeah. And then he sort of, fall, sort of falls out of the tree and then like jumps away again. And it's great, too, because this is the second time that we've seen Gon be reckless because he trusts the people around him to handle their shit. Yeah. So, essentially, like, when he jumped off over the boat, he knew that they were going to catch him. Mm -hmm. When he knocks this guy on the head, he knows that he's going to drop the hostage, which is the wife, from the cottage. And Kurapik and is going to catch her. Gonna catch her. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So, he doesn't have to say anything about it. He just knows that they're going to handle it. I'm going to handle it. We're all good. Yeah. And it's great. So, they keep on chasing, and... Uh, and well, Karapika stays with the wife, and Gon chases the, yeah. the Kiriko. So, so uh, Gon ends up getting to the very end of this uh, uh, end of this run, uh, and the um, the mythical beast jumps into the tree, right? And then Gon jumps after. Turns out it's a cliffside, and Gon is just falling through space. Except for oh no, big mistake. <laughs> except for he's got this rod and reel that has like this insanely powerful. It's the line. fishing rod, yeah. yeah. And so he throws it around. This uh, isn't just any fishing rod. It captured the Lord of the Lake. Yeah. So he like wraps around a branch and then like fires him up uh, up over the side of the mountainside. Um, cut back to Kirapika, who's looking down. He sees that. Uh, uh, 
she has like a mark on her arm and he was like some sort of tattoo why is that tattoo there and then um you see leorio run up yeah he walks up behind karapika and is like karapika's like what are you doing here and he's like oh it's fine the wound wasn't as bad as i thought so i dressed it gave him some herbs to help him sleep and he's cool i came to help you guys and karapika gets like real serious and hits him right in the face yeah he takes out karapika has um i don't know what this weapon is it's basically like two wooden swords joined by a thread of some sort it's like super long nunchucks it's kind of like nunchucks but they're wooden swords instead of i don't know bludgeons Mm -hmm. so it's really cool, and he smacks Leorio right in the face, and Leorio transforms into one of these Kirikos, and is like, how did you know it wasn't me? And Karapika's like, I didn't, but you deserved to be hit for leaving this guy behind. Essentially, like, you promised you would take care of this guy, you know that this beast is loose, and you left him there, like, I'm gonna hit you. Yeah. And it's this great character moment. Yeah. So then the Kiriko flees, and then he turns back to the wife, and is like, all right, now who are you? And she kind of smiles, and then we cut back to Gon. Cool. And Gon is standing in front of uh, one of the Kirikos, and he is uh, about to get into a fight with it, or you think he is. Yeah, the Kiriko's extending his claws. Yeah, and Gon is just kind of sitting there looking weird at him, and then he's just like, as soon as the claws are almost to his face, he's like, wait, who are you? And they're like, what? What do you mean? And Gon's like, well, you don't look at all the same. Yeah. Your voice is a little bit higher, and your face is a completely different shape. And then he just starts laughing, and then you... They really have a great time all of a sudden. And then it just, like, cuts back to them all in the cottage. Yeah, so what had happened was... The Kiriko are actually a couple, and they've been shape changing around, chasing these kids through the woods. And then married couple is their children. Yeah, it's actually a married. brother and sister that are presumably not actually married. They're just pretending. The tattoo on the sister's arm was something that in this region represents being single for life. She rubs it off, so it's not really a tattoo. It's just part of the the test. But she's like, Karapika, you passed this part of the hunter exam because you're really smart about things. And then, Leorio, you passed because you can dress wounds better right. than any doctor could. Exactly. And then one of the Kiriko uh, is like, oh, Gon, you've passed because you have an affinity for wildlife, essentially. Yeah, and you had the brain inside of you all along. All along. Here, have these ruby slippers. <laughs> so they are. they have all passed on to the next phase of the hunter exam. And the Kiriko grow wings and decide to fly them off to the place where the hunter exam will actually begin. So they have gone through, what is that, three major examinations along with several minor along the way. Things like the buses that are not exams but are tests that you can fail. Mm-hmm. But they have gone through three exams. The guy on the ship, or the, the sorry, the ship's captain, the creepy mask people with the one or two quiz, and then the Kiriko in the woods. These three tests are not at the entrance exam, they are before it. So this was all prologue to the Hunter exam. Oh, yeah. And we're going to get to the Hunter exam the next time we get to Hunter oh, x yeah. Hunter. Absolutely. And when we get into the Hunter exam, uh, the the show really, really hits on the gas. Um, it, it, goes, it goes really, really fast uh, into the Hunter exam. You have, like, a bunch of breakneck things that happen in the next episode. We, we get, like three really important plot points next yeah, episode. Yeah, a ton of new characters that you'll see throughout the exam, including one of the main characters of the show. Who the you've only... seen in the opening and yeah. he's like, well... We've seen I... him in the opening, he looks cool. We're like, when is he gonna show up? I was totally, when I was watching this the first time, I was like, who's that? Where is he? He's got the coolest design. Yeah. So he's coming up, we're gonna meet him next time, and we're gonna have, also next time, the first exam is the running one, it's super weird. And it's one of the great things about this show, which is that... It has a slow start, but it doesn't feel like it because it's all so fascinating. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I know we're gushing a lot about the show. It's just because we, we, we chose a couple of shows that w- when we started that we really, really like. Yeah. And I wanted to tell you on the front end, because Blake and I had this conversation earlier, it's that after we get through these, we're definitely, definitely going to be jumping into a shorter series after Cowboy Bebop and One Punch Man that are shorter, but not exactly the same as what you're used to, and also also not all of the same like quality not anim- all anime is made the same a lot of it is like uh big battles and people just like who's the most powerful i can become more powerful and you create like a, yeah. a stepping system kind of like how dragon ball z went into gt and like 
after you hit the end of Dragon Ball Z, who's stronger than Boo? I don't know, but let's just keep going. Right. Sort of thing. It becomes arbitrary at a certain point. But Hunter x Hunter, just to get back on what we're on, Hunter x Hunter does a really, really good job of making not only their powers really, really different, but also... Even though everybody is really strong, none of them are using, like, this is my ultimate attack sort of thing. Yeah, it's none of that. It's really, and it, it it's a lot of people having to figure out interesting ways to get out of Dire Straits. It is Naruto at its best. When Naruto is at its best, and you'll see this in two episodes from now when we cover the first big fight in Naruto, where they face off against Zabuza, mm-hmm. but Naruto at its best, is about characters who use their brains to outsmart their enemy instead of their bronze. Mm-hmm. These are characters that are strong, but they take their strength and they channel it because they know that just because you're strong doesn't mean your opponent's not dangerous. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not clever, they're going to outsmart me and I will lose even if I'm stronger. This is on display in a lot of the best Naruto fights, but it is on display in every Hunter x Hunter fight. Oh yeah, it's a, it's it's what makes it such a good show. It's um, great. Last thing that we need to talk about is the exit music of the show, especially in the first season. It's okay. weird. It's real weird. So you know how a lot of times you'll hear like kind of a, a like a plinky plonky exit music for or a lot like of animes? a really slow sad song. Yeah, in this one, it's just like. It goes from kind of this uh this poppy music to an electro music to like scream core. It's near really the end of it. fast paced screamo pop. It's like pop influenced like semi metal screamo. Yeah, and it's really unexpected at the very end of it too. And it feels really out of place, <laughs> which to be fair is not that strange for an outro song. Most outro songs feel really out of place. Yeah, but... that's true. This one's real weird. Yeah. So you can skip it. For sure. (laughs) And the only thing after the outro, despite the fact that Netflix will not autoplay the next episode until you're like 20 seconds from the end, the only thing you have to wait around for is the preview for the next episode, so just go ahead and skip to the next episode. Yeah, for sure. Anyways, uh, we will be uh, giving you a sneak peek of the next show that we're going to get back to. Yeah, this is our last new show for a while. Yeah. So I don't know if we've made this clear yet. We're going to have a a rotation of shows and uh, it's going to be four at a time so that basically we're (laughs) not getting ahead of ourselves really, but that way we're kind of touching each show once a month. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we've met Cowboy Bebop, we've met Naruto, we've met uh, One Punch Man and Hunter x Hunter. And we're going back to Cowboy Bebop next week. No new show next week. It's Cowboy Bebop time, and you're going to love it. It's great. Yeah. Cool. Blake and Spencer Get Jumped is made by Forever Summer Productions. With sound editing work done by Rashad English of Plain English Productions. He's our level four sound wizard. Our podcast is ad-free and we want to keep it that way. If you want to help us keep releasing episodes without the use of ads, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Patrons get exclusive member content as well as unlocking group perks. Follow us on Twitter at B and S Get Jumped and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Blake and Spencer Get Jumped. New episodes come out every Sunday on your favorite podcast platform. And if you like the show, please like, subscribe, and review. Reviews help us chart on iTunes. Next time, we head back to Cowboy Bebop. Vicious. You don't know what vicious is! And then I uh, punch an air conditioner unit. 